Hi, I'm Jay Andrews with Laguna Tools. Today, we're gonna have a look at the Supermax 37 inch dual drum sander. We've got a brand new one in the box. Let's go ahead and take it out, get it set up and run some boards through it. Now your Supermax sander is gonna arrive on a pallet in a box just like this. And the first thing that you wanna do is to make sure that there is no shipping damage to your machine. Examine the box and the pallet and make sure that nothing looks like it's been roughed up too much there. If you do see evidence of anything like that, make a note on the shipping receipt and give us a call if you notice that there's any damage to the machine. Now with the box open, you'll see that there's a wood crate inside. The easiest way to get rid of the box is just to slit it right along one side here up against the wood. With the sander unwrapped, you'll see that it's largely assembled and it already has the sandpaper on it. Now that we've got the machine unwrapped and all the accessories set to the side, there's a few things you wanna find. The first is the owner's manual. Take a few moments to review the manual, go through the setup procedures, read, follow, and understand all the information that is in the owner's manual to keep you safe and to get the most out of your machine. The second thing you wanna do is to find the box with the casters. The 37 inch dual drum sander comes with a set of casters and we're gonna install these. But first we need to unbolt it from the pallet and scoot the machine to uh, install the casters. The machine is bolted down in all four corners and you can grab the nut on the top. You can also reach the bottom of the bolt on the bottom if you have to hold that as well. A lot of times you can break these loose on the top and take the nut off. We're gonna repeat this process on the other three corners of the machine. And as you loosen these bolts and get ready to move the machine, get somebody in the shop to help you out. The machine is heavy, and as you unbolt it, it might become a little bit unstable. So have a couple of hands on it to make sure that you're safe and that your machine is safe. Now with all the nuts removed from the corner post here, insert the hammer handle, pry it down, and you're gonna push the bolt down down below into the pallet and you can pull it out the bottom. If you need to tap it down, just get a little punch and drive it down. Now that the machine is loose, we're gonna slide it to the side and you'll notice that there's a block underneath the motor and that supports it during shipping so that it doesn't vibrate as the machine is transported to you. We're gonna slide the machine this way to avoid the block and since you can't slide it forward, we're just gonna come off the edge of the pallet and get the wheels on. Now I've cut off the excess plastic and I'm getting ready to slide the machine just off the edge of the pallet here. So I'm gonna take some of the two by fours that are part of the pallet that it was cased in. And I'll put one on the front side and one on the back side here to span the gap. These legs are kind of at an angle and to keep the machine from tipping as you move it. Go ahead and do that. And I like to put a four by four under the end to make sure I've got good support. I just wanna hang the outside corner off the pallet and I want to leave the main body of the machine still on the pallet so that I have good support and don't have it tip. You want to have a friend help you because the machine can be tippy now. And as you slide it forward, you want to make sure that somebody has got the balance of it so that you can put the casters on in the corner. I've got my casters ready to go. It takes a three quarter inch wrench to put these on. So let's go ahead and slide it this way and get the casters on. Now while you're moving the machine, make sure that you're pulling by something solid like the column or the cast framework of the machine. Don't pull against the table or the rollers or any type of sheet metal at all. If you need some gloves, put some gloves on right now. Slide it just a few inches forward. Now I'll take the caster with one washer on it already, slide it through the bottom, another washer on the top, and then finally secure it with the nut. This is a three quarter inch nut. With the casters installed on this end, slide the machine off the pallet and onto the casters on this end, again using some help because the machine can still tip, and repeat the process on the other end. With the center support block removed, I can slide this leg off the forward edge of the pallet to install the caster. Now I've taken the two by fours from the pallet and slid them to the end so that it creates sort of a ramp to support this last leg. And uh, before you install this here, you wanna look at the 
caster. There's a nut on the inside here that you can hold to tighten it down or you can hold the bell or clamp the bell there with a pair of pliers as you tighten these down to make sure that they're secure. With your machine on the ground, clear the pallet and packing materials out of the way and wheel the machine back into your work area to complete the assembly. To prepare your machine for shipping, at the factory we tighten down the table support casting using two nuts. These are half inch nuts at the front. There's two on this side, two on the opposite side. We don't need them tightened anymore, so let's go ahead and loosen those up using a half inch wrench. And repeat the process on the other side. Now that the jam nuts are loose, we need to loosen the set screw that tightens up against the column. That's done with an Allen wrench. Just back this off slightly. And once you have that set screw loosened, you're gonna bring the set screw just against the column very lightly, just finger pressure. I'll do that with an Allen wrench, just touching the column. And now hold the set screw in place with the Allen wrench and finally re-tighten the bolt, maintaining that light pressure against the column. And this is gonna maintain proper table alignment throughout the entire travel. Repeat the process on the top and on the opposite side. And again, at the opposite side, we'll loosen the set screw and back it off and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the set screw in just finger tight just to where it just barely touches the column and holding your allen wrench tighten down the jam nut These adjustments are only done on the bottom table casting, but not on the upper drum casting. Leave these alone, leave those tight. Those are factory set. The Supermax 37 double drum sander is not shipped with a cord or a plug, so you'll need to install one before you power up your machine. Now, if you're comfortable doing electrical work, you can go right ahead and install the cord. If you're not, call a qualified electrician to do this work for you. To install the cord, you're gonna need at least a 10 gauge wire going to the machine. You don't wanna run this one on an extension cord, so get that power cord the proper length, and we're gonna connect it to the bottom junction box of the machine. There are four Phillips head screws that hold this cover in place. Remove the screws and bring the cover up to where you can work with it. Again, this is a five horsepower motor. It's single phase, and that'll mean that we have two hot legs and a ground. Uh, on your power cord, you may have a couple of different colors. You're gonna find one that's either green or it might have a green stripe or tracer on it. And then you'll find a black and one other color. It might be red, it could be blue, or it could be a white wire there. But you'll have three conductors there total. Slide the strain relief nut over the end of the wire. And then the strain relief collar goes over that next. And now you're ready to install this. We've already gone through and bared the end of the wire and the end of each of these strands here. You'll make sure that these are tight. And now we can stick it through the side hole in the box and make the connections. Now for the ground wire, I'm gonna install a ring terminal on the end so I can Put it under one of the screws and we'll get this crimped down. There we go. So now that the ground wire has got a ring terminal on it, I'll secure that to the screw. The two other wires are gonna use a press-in connector. The push-in connectors use a lever that'll be pulled up 
It'll open up the terminal on the backside, slide the wire in, and then finally push the lever down to lock the wire in place. Give it a quick tug test, and you'll know you're ready to go. Since it's a 220 connector, you can install them in either direction as long as the ground is to ground, and either the two hot legs are to the black and to the white wires. There's one connector, quick tug, and finally the black wire. Push it all the way in, and clamp it with the lever. Those two are ready to go. The last one is my ground screw. The next step is to install the crank handle for the lift mechanism. There are two set screws, a short and a long. Take the long set screw, line it up with a flat spot on the back, and tighten it down. Long one is tight, short one's tight, and then I'll just give those a little bit of a crank to secure them. Now that the crank handle is on, give it a few turns to make sure that everything is free and clear. Boy, that is really smooth. Now it's time to install the upper cover or the dust shroud for the machine. I've set out a 7 16 wrench and a screwdriver and I've got the hardware laid out. Let's grab the cover. I find that it's easiest to stand the hinges upright in the back and finally just to set the cover in place right over them. The hinge will be on the inside and the fasteners, the screws will come through the back and the nuts will be on the inside. Now this is easiest done with two people, but if you don't have anybody in your shop, I just rest the uh, upper lid here on a block of wood to keep it off the table a little bit. I'll have the nut and the washer lined up and then simply lift the lid a little bit, line it up with the screws and then drop your washer on and then a nut. Get one side started and then do the other. Okay, that's the last nut. Now that everything's tight, let's check our fit. Excellent. One final thing to do is to remove the support block before you plug the machine in. Simply lower the table by cranking the handle and reaching in. And there might be one or two of these little support blocks in there and that's just strictly for shipping. Now I've plugged in the machine and it's time to go through and test to make sure everything is running properly. The first thing I like to fire up is the feed table here. And that's just simply done with this knob. There's an off position and you can turn it on just to make sure this is slow speed and you can gradually increase this to make sure that the feed works. The feed's working good. This has IntelliSand and this will let you set a speed on the machine and as it senses more load from the sanding drums, it'll actually adjust the speed to keep your sanding perfect. Now that we've tested everything, let's open this up and have a look at the action on the rollers. Now, under normal operation, do not operate the machine with the cover open. It's just a safety issue. That looks great. All right, now we've gone ahead and connected the dust collector to the uh, sander. I've got a piece of wood here ready to go on some rollers. I've got an in-feed roller and an out-feed roller set up to make it easy. I'm gonna go through and mark my piece, but when you do your first test pass on the machine, go ahead and make some marks on the wood like this. Do just a light pass, and you wanna kinda gradually sneak up on cleaning that panel up there. If you take too big of a cut at first, uh, you're gonna bog the machine down and may run into some problems. Just do a nice, easy cut. Watch your pencil lines go away. All right, so now we're ready to run the board. I'm gonna go ahead and get the head on, start the table feed here, get the dust collector going and feed the board through.
Well, you can see how nice this board cleaned up. This board had a little bit of twist to it, and uh, obviously with, with the cracks and checks that are in this piece of wood, it wasn't completely smooth, and so you got a chance to watch the IntelliSand feature work. IntelliSand will sense when the load is a little bit higher on the drum head, and it'll slow the feed rate down so that the cut is a little bit lighter during the pass. It's one of the great things about this sander. Now, if you have any questions on this machine at all, feel free to give us a call toll-free at 800-234-1976 or look us up on the web at lagunatools.com.